I, if I assigned something from the book, then there would have been many people that got it done. You should, you should um, put it online. On uh, if I had that option, I certainly would have. All right, here we go. Quiet, please. Uh, any uh, questions on the last couple of days, which was that Friday, which was 10 to A? Uh, and then we had a uh, three-day weekend that turned into a four-day weekend. Okay. That's not a four-day weekend. Giving us work is not making it four days. Yes, it is. Yes. No. No, I didn't. No, because you guys said it way too late. I was already up and ready to go. Did you get to stay in your pajamas? Yeah. Oh, I was already in my school. I was already in my school. I was already in my school. No, I will talk to the the sound of the chat they made. <laughs> all right, listen up. Listen up. Pierce is coming around. He's going to grab all of your homework. If you haven't turned it on, Teams, uh, you owe me 10 2A and the worksheet from yesterday. You turn it on, Teams, that's great. But I bet most of you didn't turn in 10 2A, although I know some of you did, uh, but so, most of you did not. So I need 10 2A for sure. And then the worksheet from yesterday. If you did it online, that's fine. But make sure you, you know that. Uh, remember, I never forget to put zeros in the grade book. All right, let's look at the calendar. Uh, we're on Wednesday right here. Once again, 10 to with the start of the chapter. We got a quiz next Wednesday. We will do a big review on Tuesday before the quiz uh, because there's just a lot of stuff. Uh, we got three weeks before we even get to, I mean, we're not even to the chapter test. So we got a lot of stuff in this one little chapter. Wait, why is the chapter nine review? Yeah, that's just a chapter 10 review. Thank you. All right. Uh, it says it because I copied from the previous one and I didn't change. I said to myself I should change it and I forgot to. All right. Um, so what you're getting right now is not a, uh, a new worksheet. It's the same, same one that we've been doing. Um, we are going to go over some new stuff today. Uh, primarily, it's called projections. I do you need, you need your book uh, to do these two things. All right. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> we've been doing something called areas, triangles, and trapezoids, and a review today. So we'll go over all the shapes and all the form. Remember I said I've never actually counted how many. I thought it was around 20 total for the chapter. Well, let's review all the forms that we know so far. All right, today we're going to uh, review the triangles, the trapezoids, the rectangles, the parallelograms. That's the four shapes we've had so far. We got a formula for uh, area of each one of those, area for perimeter for a couple of those specifically. So we're well over, you know, six formulas right now. Uh, we're doing something you may not have known. Maybe you can figure this one out yourself, right? Uh, it's got a weird name to it. It's called orthographic projections. It's not a big deal. You just got to see one or two examples. Uh, but uh, the ones that typically give you uh, problems are the ones where instead of solving for the area, you're solving for the length, the width, the height, the base, the, the height, something like that. Okay, so that's what we got going on. Pretty quick class. Uh, no notes today. We've already taken all the notes we need for this material. Uh, even the orthographic uh, and the solving for an unknown, uh, we don't need to take notes on that. We start off with our basic shape, which is the rectangle, and the formula for area of a rectangle is just simply length times width. There's formula number one. Formula number two was the perimeter. <clears throat> Two different versions of perimeter. For the people that want to keep their life nice and easy, they go with that right there. It's the distance around an object. So I take all the sides and I add them up. Okay. For those of you that need a formula for everything, well, the perimeter of a rectangle, since the length, uh, uh, the top and the bottom, left and right are the same measurements, we'll call that length and width, that you multiply the length times two and you add that to the width multiplied by two. Make sure that you do the multiplication first before you do the addition. So for those of you that like formulas, we have two. For those of you that uh, don't like formulas, we still have two. Your formula for perimeter will be the same for all shapes except for the circle. Circle's got a unique formula for perimeter. 
Uh, but for all polygons, uh, shapes made up of segments joined at their endpoints, uh, all polygons have the same basic perimeter form and add up all the sides. We have for just a couple of one, like the square and the rectangle, we have unique formulas for them, but we, don't, we can go with the tried and true, just add up all the sides as well too. Hey, there's a rectangle. Why is a rectangle? Because I say it's a rectangle. Remember, if you look at the shape and you're not told what the shape is, then all you can do is count sides. One, two, three, four, it's a quadrilateral. It might be, it kind of looks like a rectangle. Why I know it's a rectangle is because the instructions tell me it's a rectangle or if I had on it four right angles. If there's four right angles, boom, it's a rectangle. Without any of that stuff, uh, either the word rectangle, the four right angles, it's just a quadrilateral. You can't use any of this stuff except for maybe perimeter. All right, so to calculate both area and perimeter, the area is length times width. We talked about, hey, what's the length? What's width on the rectangle? And I basically said, well, you pick a side. That becomes your length, and the other side becomes your width. Ace? So we're not allowed to assume what shape it is. So like, if, if it was a blank screen, right? If it was a completely blank screen, and I drew this shape right here, that's it. We don't know what it is until I have some more information. But we can assume that it has the four right angles. Because, yes. So that is the one thing that you can assume. And generally speaking, as you go into higher level math, they will tell you. They won't just draw a shape and say, hey, do something with it. They'll say, given this quadrilateral, and then there'll be some more statements. Okay. So in high school, when you guys take geometry, which is what I'm teaching right now, like uh, that is one of those things we deal with on a daily basis. Well, is it a triangle? Well, it's got three sides. The sides are made up of uh, segments. Yeah, it's a triangle. So it's just like real life. You can't it's just like real life. Exactly. Right. So uh, I don't know if you've ever done construction or other, but you, you don't make assumptions <laughs> that the room is square. It certainly looks like we have a rectangle. The floor looks rectangular. The ceiling looks rectangle. The only way we could confirm it's a rectangle is if you actually do some measurements. There's plenty of stories. I asked mom and dad about, well, I thought it really was a circle, and I bought, I bought the stuff for a circle or for a rectangle. It turns out it's not a circle or a rectangle. Right? It's close, but it's not exactly. And that's why sometimes things don't fit. People make assumptions. Back to our shape. It is a rectangle because I said it was a rectangle. And I don't mean that like, oh, I'm the teacher. I said it was a rectangle. I'm saying they have to state in the problem what the shape is or what the given information is. So it's a rectangle because it says it's a rectangle. Uh, and then we simply take the length and the width. We multiply them together. Remember, area is always measured in square units. And we, I showed you that slide where we literally filled the shape full of little tiny squares. We counted the squares. The rectangle or the square is the one that you can, you can kind of wrap your head around. Yeah, I can fill that full of squares and count that. Uh, for perimeter, perimeter, remember, is that up all the four sides? The unique thing about rectangles is that opposite sides have the same measurements. So if the left side is nine, the right side is nine, if the top is four, the bottom is four. And the formula for those like formula are two of the lengths, two fours plus two nines. Now, perimeter is not measured in square units. It's measured in just units, because all we're doing is measuring the distance, how many centimeters around the outside. Uh, when we're measuring area, we're measuring how many little tiny squares go inside the shape. There's 36 uh, uh, squares that measure one centimeter by one centimeter that fit inside the shape. And that's it for rectangles. Okay, the next shape that we, oh, by the way, squares are rectangles. Uh, the next shape we had was the parallelogram. Well, a parallelogram, all rectangles are parallelograms, but this is your classic parallelogram shape where it looks like it's canted a little bit or, or, or it's tilted a little bit. Okay, so that's our classic one. This is where we get into problems. It's not the bottom that's the base. Yes, 99% of the time, the bottom is the base. What is the base is one of the four sides. One of the four sides gets chosen as the base. Either you choose it, or the person writing the math problem says that, oh, here's the base. The perpendicular distance between the base, right? The base could be bottom or it could be left or top or right. The perpendicular distance between the base and the opposite sides, we get that little square right there, is called the height. And the height is measured perpendicularly always. Anybody know why we measure height or measure distance perpendicularly? Okay. How far is it between these two lines? Uh, we don't know if we need to measure it. Right, but how would you measure it? Okay, it's 
it's 30 centimeters between those two lines. What's the problem with that? You said to measure it, so I measured it. Between the two black lines. Okay. Not the yeah, those. It's straight up 25. And down. No, straight up and down. Why do we measure things in using his word straight up and down? Because people couldn't measure it in weird angles. And so weird why angles. did we choose straight up and down using his words? Because it's easier. Well, it was pretty easy to go from here to here. That was pretty easy. It's something people can remember. Okay. Why do we measure things straight up and down? Those are his words, not mine. Something that we're used to. Have you ever heard the, the, the expression, the shortest distance between two points? A straight line? What's an expression? If I put a point on one of those one of those segments right there and I measure to the other one, if I measure at a diagonal, I get a pretty long distance. The only distance, the distance continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller until I get to that angle that's formed right there. And that angle is <laughs> as 90 degrees. We measure things perpendicularly because it gives us the shortest distance between the two shapes. Okay? That's why we do that. And that's why you're always sitting a little white square. All right, back to our parts of a parallelogram base and height. Uh, you can get into a problem because when they give you the measurements on this shape, they can give you one, two, three, four measurements. Yeah. Of those four measurements, the only time that you use this measurement right here, you learn as I'm pointing to the right side of the red parallelogram, the only time you use this measurement right here, and it is a measurement, is when you do the perimeter. If you're measuring the area, we're looking for the dotted line for the height. And the dotted line comes from the base and it goes to the opposite side, base and height. I will have at least two people. I will put a parallelogram and this side right here will be measured six, but the height is five and I'll have somebody use six in their calculation for the area. Don't be that kid. All right, so uh, the only problem we get with parallelograms is occasionally when the shape is really, really, really tilted to one side, we can't measure perpendicularly from the base if the base is the bottom to the top. Go ahead. So you, so you extend the base. So we extend the base and we move the height off to the side. Okay, and you'll see that in our book and you've seen that in our book. All right, the formula, we're on formula number uh, three. The formula for uh, Arab parallelogram is base times height. Remember, I cut the parallelogram, made two triangles, and I showed you that the two triangles uh, uh, is where we get the formula, base times height. All right, questions? All right, so to do the calculation, these are the two values that you need. You need a base, yes, many times the base at the bottom, but not all the times, and then the perpendicular distance between the base and the opposite side, we define as the height, you multiply those two things together, and then you put the units, it's measured in inches or inches squared. All right, uh, occasionally, because some of these formulas have a division by two, I'll have some kid divide this by two. Just remember for parallelograms, that's not the formula that we divide by two. All right, we're up to, that's formula four. Formula five, triangles. Remember that's a polygon with three sides. Once again, the part, the, once again, the parts of a triangle, one of the sides, one of the three sides is called the base. It can be the bottom, but it could also be the left or the right. Either one is the base, right? The base is just one of the sides. The perpendicular distance between the base, not the opposite side this time, like a parallelogram, but the opposite vertex, that's the sharp point there at the top. Uh, the vertex is what we define as the height, right? Some books call it the altitude. All right, those are the two measurements that you need for triangles, right? Uh, these are the three of the four ways that height and base will look like. Either the base is on the bottom, the base is on the left or the right, or it's a right triangle. If it's a right triangle, all my things go active at the eight o'clock. Um, you know how to stop it? It's really loud. Uh, you'll, 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 you'll survive. If it's a right triangle, you won't get that dotted line for height, but you still will get the little white square. And then the weird cousin is this, once again, the scaling obtuse one. And just like for the parallelogram, if it's tilted way off to the side, in order to calculate the height, you need to extend the base. 
to get the height measurements. Now, you have to be very careful because they will place a measurement for this dotted line. We'll use it later when we get to high school, not this year. Um, that measurement is true. It might be six, right? But that has nothing to do with the area or the perimeter calculation. It's just extra information. All right. These are the three ones I, I left off the right triangle right here. But to find the base, my eyeball always goes to a little square. The, eyeball, uh, the square touches the base, and it also forms the height. Base, stop. <laughs> so my base and my height are two and three on this one. My eyeball doesn't go to the bottom. It goes to the white square. My base and my height are 15 and 10. And my base and my height are four and eight on the scaling of two swim. All right, the formula, our fifth one is one half base times height. The calculator friendly one is base times height divided by two. If you remember right, what, how did we come up with this calculation? We started with a uh, parallelogram, form of base times height. We cut the parallelogram in, high, in half, which made two triangles. Therefore, the formula for a triangle is one half base times height. It's half of a parallelogram. And remember, we got the parallelogram formula from a rectangle. So it all evolves around a rectangle. So all I got to do is I got to find the little square. The square touches the base. It touches the height. Multiply those two numbers together and divide by two, and we're done. The formula for a perimeter, we don't have one. Well, we do, but we just decide not to write down with all three sides added together. So not on this one, but on the previous one right here, if I give you all three sides, it's pretty easy to, to calculate for the perimeter. All right, we're running through these real quick, quick review. Our, our last shape, uh, by the way, we have calculator friendly one in red right here, which is base times height divided by two. If you're doing it by hand, you have to use PEMDAS, right? You want to do multiplication. Uh, and uh, you, it is your choice how you do that multiplication. It is commutative. Last shape, trapezoid. If there's one that causes seventh graders problems, it's the trapezoid, right? The trapezoid has four sides. It is not a parallelogram. It is not a rectangle. It has two sides that are parallel, just two sides. Parallelograms and rectangles, each opposite side is parallel to each other. Okay? But on a trapezoid, two of the sides will not be parallel. Hey, the left and the right here are not parallel, but top and bottom are parallel. Uh, this is the definition of trapezoid, exactly one set of parallel sides. Uh, we call those two parallel sides base one, base two. It doesn't matter which one is base one, base two, but they are both bases. But one is base one, because they're not the same measurements. One is base one, one is base two. Uh, and then the distance between those two bases perpendicularly measured, right? Little square there is called the height. All right. Uh, depending upon how you twist or turn your trapezoid, we get three basic uh, uh, configurations here. Hey, okay, top and bottom are parallel, they're your bases. Left and right are parallel, they're your bases. And lastly, this is called a right trapezoid because it's got a right angle. In fact, it's got two right angles. Uh, on a right trapezoid, you will not get the dotted line. The distance between the two bases are the height. All right. So the formula for uh, area of a trapezoid, uh, that's what's in your book right there right, in yellow. Um, I put the words there just so you can see what it is. The calculator friendly one is right here. Notice there's not much difference other than it just saves a keystroke or two on your calculator. That was it. That was everything all in three days of instruction. Okay. Can I, I said we're going to do two new things today. Here comes the new stuff. This is our yes. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, if you choose to do this by hand and not with a calculator, you must do GEMDAS, meaning you have to do the base plus the base one plus base two first. Before you multiply by the height, before you divide by two. If you have that dollar calculator, right, and you're like, well, I got a calculator. You said I can just type it in the way it appears. No, I said if you have a scientific or, or graphing calculator, you can type it in using parentheses. Okay, so I get kids like, well, you didn't tell me to use the parentheses. I said to type it in as it appears, I meaning you must use the parentheses. Uh, but if you have that dollar calculator, you don't have parentheses, and it also does not do order of operations. You are the one that has to do the order of operations. All right, so to do a quick calculation, we take the two bases, we add them together. Six plus four is 10. We multiply by the height. The height is six. 10 times six is 60. Half of 60 is 30. So we get 30 square centimeters. Remember, we're doing area. Calculator friendly one. 
Well, you basically type it in as it appears with the parentheses. If you got those really expensive calculators, you don't have to put a multiplication symbol. It just knows. The calculator knows that if you have a closed parentheses and there's a number next to it that you want to multiply. It. All right. Projections. Open up your book, page 327. Open up your books to page three. I said two new things projections and solving for the unknown. Some of you may have encountered a problem like this uh, on a previous test. I believe I saw one on the NWEA test as well, too. Uh, these are called projections. They take a shape and they project it onto a graph. Okay. So um, you can look at any of the ones on page 327 from 7 through 12. Ace, open up your book. All right, page 327, 7 through 12. I'll just look at number 7. There's a picture of what's on number 7. So they take a shape that you either know or you don't know, hopefully you know it, and they project it onto a graph. This is called orthographic projection. And we're not going to write down a definition. We're just going to talk about what they want you to do with it. Malachi, as you look at the whole thing, are there any numbers here? Yeah. Do you see any numbers? I see no numbers, right? Well, if you ask me to calculate the error of a shape and you don't give me numbers, how in the world am I going to make that happen? What do you think? Yeah. Use the squares. What do you mean use the squares? Um, count the squares. Okay. If you, uh, and that's basically the idea here. It's a pretty simple idea. So if I were to write instructions, these would be my instructions. Step number one, what do you need to do? Before you even do that, how do you know which squares to count? The ones in red. Okay. So how do you know which ones in red to count? Just look at me. Step number one should be what? And identify the shape. So step number one, what's the shape? Oh, triangle. Okay. Step number two should be count squares. Before you count, what squares are we counting? The red, red squares. squares. Well, okay. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not like that. We need to multiply it by two to fit it in an actual square so we can. So how square. about before we do any of that, once we identify it's a triangle, what should be the next step? Oh. You count out the Write out the formula. How about we write out the formula because the formula will tell us which squares we need to count. Base times height divided by two. So which squares do I need to count? Base. I need to identify the base. It's a triangle. Here's the shape for it. By the way, I left off the part that says to calculate the area. Uh, I need to calculate the, uh, uh, the base and the height. All right. To calculate the base, here we go. The hardest part about an orthographic projection, Noah, you're going to answer it. Let's figure out which one is the base. So looking at my picture of the one from the book, which one do you want to be the base? Why the not the left or the right? Because they're different sizes. What do you mean by that, different sizes? In order to use the formula, we've got to have a number, yes? Okay, so if I chose the left side to be my base, could you count the, I don't know, without a ruler, could you measure the distance of the left side without a ruler? Not in seventh grade. Eighth grade you will, but not in seventh grade. Uh, eighth grade you get learned, you get taught a, a new technique for counting slanted lines. But you don't know that technique right now. So what you're looking for on these projection ones, if you're looking for, uh, it's not a great term, but I'll call it flat. Right? Can you see the top is flat? Yeah. It lines up perfectly with the squares. That's what you're looking for. Okay, Keegan, count the squares for me. Uh, that, uh, but, and I'm going to call these dimensions, the base and the height dimensions. So count me squares. The red ones? No, or all of them. The blue ones. Hey, Ace, let me be the one that. Uh, Why uses... not the gray ones, mm -hmm. huh? No. Uh, Are you colorist? Keegan. Yeah. We need to find the base and the height. So that means the base is one of the three sides. If we pick the left side and ask you to tell me how far is it from here to here, what's the problem? Um, Without a ruler, what's the problem from here to here? You don't know the size of the square? I don't know the sizes of the square. So that's why we want to pick, and I'm going to use the term flat, right, or straight, 
I want the side that's straight or flat. Which side is that? Uh, the middle. Which side is that? Uh, you see this one's diagonal? Yep. If I were to count square, I'm like, I don't know how, I mean, this doesn't even go from corner to corner, right? It would be hard to say how far is it from here to here? Because I would need from here all the way down there. I could do that with a ruler, but without a ruler, I can't do that. However, I can tell you how far it is from here to here by. Five. So do that, count them. Six. It's six, right? Yep. It's six squares long or six tick marks, what he said, six lines. I'm with that. All right, so now we have the, we have the base. How about the height? Where are we going to measure the height from? The middle of the base. Why the middle and not the side? Because the sides are bad. All right. Now, if we count it from the side, it turns out that, is that any different from counting it from the middle? Yeah. All right, count it from the side. One, two, three, four, five. All right, is that different or the same as counting it from the, where's my clicker? I clicked off for a second. Is that any different or is that the same as counting it from the middle? I should have chosen a different color than that. If I count from the side, it's one, two, three, four, five. Is that different or the same as this red line? Same. It turns out that's the same. So now we have our two measurements, our base and our height. We can now calculate the area of this triangle. Just 30. What's the area of this triangle? 15. So it's 15. Square, square, square units, right? Square. So six times five is 30, 30 divided by two is units 15. Square. So units squared or square units, either one's fine. All right, you tell me, difficult or challenging? Easy. I agree, but I know that a couple of you, when you got that this question on the NWA test, you're like, I don't even know what to do here. Well, maybe because you didn't know what the formula was, and also, maybe you didn't know what to do when there's no numbers present. All right. If there's a challenging one to do, it's the more challenging shape. So Ew. here we go. What's the shape? Uh, we don't know. Well, well, we don't know. The shape is trapezoid. How do you know it's trapezoid? Because if we tilt it on its side, the two lines are Hey, okay, notice the definition of trapezoid is that you have two parallel sides. The left and right are parallel to each other. He top and bottom. That, top and bottom are not parallel. Okay. But left and right are parallel. Ace. What? He just assumed that. How do we know? It doesn't say that it what is. What is it drawn on? Uh, a grid. Okay, the grid is the, we know that the grid uh, has parallel squares. Okay. <laughs> However, if it was not on the grid, he is right. We couldn't assume it's a trapezoid. But, but since can, it's drawn on the grid, we can make that assumption. We couldn't for the last one either you said that we couldn't assume we can't assume unless it either states it or there's other information on the depicted picture that helps us and because it's depicted on a grid the grid is drawn with parallel lines okay. all right so it is a trapezoid right uh let's see the formula for air of a trapezoid is what What's the form for air trapezoid? Base, base one, one plus base two, base two, base two times height divided by two. All right, so that is what we need to find all of these variables right here in order to get to the answer. Okay, where are the two bases? Top, bottom, or left and right? Left and right. Notice this time, remember the parallel sides are the bases. So it's not always top and bottom or, or top or bottom that are the bases. So left and right are my bases. So what are the dimensions? So it's basically five and three. Can everyone see that, right? Yes. That side is five and this side is three, okay? And it doesn't matter which one is base one and base two. Ace? The very top left uh, corner um, uh, square, it makes it look like the shape. Not how it, it does. Are you saying that, notice that this one, is there another and one? And then the end this of it. This one as well too. And then all the way to the right, the end of it matches to fit that area perfectly. <gasps> yeah, that won't always be the case, but in this case, it's, I don't know if that's true, but it certainly looks like it might fit. Okay, let's get through this calculation. Okay. All right, uh, the height though is, well, this is difference. It's what, how do we measure height? 
How do we measure height from what from what to what? From base to base. Now, if my base to base is left and right, I'm measuring the distance left to right. How far is that? Where are you getting that from? On straight across from the bottom, that will be my height, and that is seven. Now we have all the dimensions necessary to plug those in. Five plus three is eight. Half of eight is four, four. four times seven is. Right. Notice that doing it by hand when the numbers are friendly, very easy. Come test day, all I got to do is make that 7.25 and 3.11, and the wheels fall off, right? Which is why you kind of always want to have a calculator when you've got calculations when the numbers are not friendly. In real life, numbers are not friendly. They're not three, five, and seven. Okay. Real dimensions are, they have got some decimals that usually attach to them. That's why we're using a calculator to do the most of these calculations. Yes. Where do you get, where do we get our own calculator on the no. Somebody help me before I throw things. He, says, he said no. Wait, no. God bless you. That's what my son is. No, no. It's bless your heart. Oh, bless your heart. Sure. Uh, that's a southern expression. I grew up in the south. I've never used that expression. But <laughs> clearly, Pierce, you were not paying attention from day one in this chapter. I said this is the calculator chapter. If you if you refuse or you choose not to bring a calculator on test day, I'm going to warn you. It's going to be 7.25. It's going to be 3.11. Know what to do. Make sure you have your calculator with you so that you don't get hung up on these ugly, ugly, ugly calculations. All right. The last thing we'll do, open up your book. Uh, Gavin, you get to pick. Give me on page 328. Uh, pick one, 11 through 18. Pick one. And tell me what we're given. 11 through 18. Pick one. 11 Don't overthink it. 11. Just pick one. Um, 17. All right. What's the shape? Trapezoid. On number 17, we have a trapezoid. We know that the formula for air of a trapezoid is equal to someone. Base one plus one. Open parentheses. Base one. one plus base two. Close parentheses. Times height. And then, all right, that's our base formula. Now, on number 17, what information are we given? Base, base, one is three. base one is three. So all I'm doing is I'm plugging in what we're given. Well, Keep talking. Is, height is, uh, height is two. So we don't know base two? No. no. So guess what we're going to put? X. X. Professor. The height is? Um, the height is two. Okay. All over two, and I bet we're given the area. 18. 18. All right. Everyone look at the board. This seems like an impossible problem. This one's pretty easy. Watch the magic. You ready? What's two divided by two? Well, Does it not say two over two? That's two divided by two. It cancels. So what are we left with? 18 is equal to three plus, three plus x. What do we do to both sides? Therefore, base two is how big? 15. That was pretty simple. Okay, they're all like that. Okay, you plug in the given information, but you got to start with the formula, and then you use a little bit of algebra, a little bit of arithmetic to get to your answer. What? Can I get a tissue? Yes. All right. I said we're going to do two new things. We just did two new things. All right. Some of you, while I have been talking, have been doing your homework. How many people are done? So for three people who get to sit there smugly, two people who get to sit there smugly, the rest of you now take your review sheet and get the whole thing done. We have 15 minutes. There's not a single person that can't do this entire worksheet in 15 minutes, even though there are... 20 problems. I'll bet you will do it in five minutes flat. Uh, I'd say most of you get it done in 10. Yeah, but with the wrong answer. What's today's date? Uh, today <laughs> is the 17th. Today is the day that we land on Mars, baby. Oh, oh yeah, with the new uh, no, like persistence or something. Yeah, in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, it's going to happen at 1.55 our time. Oh, I knew that it was at like I thought it was uh, Thursday. Six months ago. I thought it I thought it was two. I thought it landed on Thursday. No, it's yeah. the touchdown is supposed to be Wait, at one fifty. I thought it landed on Thursday. Yeah, it, yeah, it landed on Thursday. Yeah, it landed on Thursday. Today. 
I've been waiting for this this moment for your entire life. No. I, uh, let's see. Uh, e learners, who's up on? Lily, any questions? Uh, no. So you should see the worksheet posted online already. If you have any questions, send me a chat or email. Uh, we're going to stop it right here unless you have questions, Lily. Uh, no questions. What's the name of your dog? Oh, that's Bandit, and this is Bumble. Bandit and Fumble? Yeah, Those are crazy cool names. Bumble. All right. All right. See you later.